Hello, I'm Howard T. Spence. I'm Eaton County Commissioner representing residents here in Delta Township. I just wanted to share with you this video which you are about to see which I was pleased to be able to witness myself while attending a meeting of the Delta Side Business Association here in Delta Township. The Delta Side Business Association is a business oriented group that has a number of business members that come together to discuss and understand issues and problems uh, and activities here in Delta Township and the neighboring communities uh, where economic development and assisting small businesses is important. And as a part of that process, the Delta Side Business Association each month at its meetings invites speakers to come in to make presentations that would be of interest to our members. And it just happened that uh, in the June 2016 meeting, which occurred earlier this week, the uh, Delta Side Business Association had invited and requested representatives from the Eaton County Sheriff's Department to come in and to speak to the business owners and members present uh, and their guests about some of the activities in the uh, Eaton County Sheriff's Department and in particular uh, activities related to the uh, Eaton County Sheriff's uh, Citizen uh, Police Academy, which is uh, an innovation and program that our uh, current Sheriff Tom Reich has introduced uh, into the uh, Eaton County law enforcement programs. The uh, Civilian Police Academy or Community Police Academy is designed to provide an opportunity for approximately 50 uh, residents of Eaton County and the surrounding areas to, to come and participate in a 10, 11, 12 week program where those individuals have an opportunity to interact with our deputies and correction staff uh, and the sheriff uh, physically on site at our jail and at some of the training facilities uh, that the Eaton County Sheriff maintains at Lansing Community College West, which is here in Delta Township, and also uh, other venues including, for example, the EMS services right here in Delta in our local Delta Fire Department. And this month, the Undersheriff, Jeffrey Cook, uh, who is the Chief Deputy uh, reporting to Sheriff Tom Reich, and basically oversees the day-to-day -day operations of the Sheriff's Department, uh, agreed to come and speak, and he spoke about this police academy. And I was aware of that uh, academy because as a commissioner, I sit on the Public Safety Committee for Eaton County, which interacts regularly with the Sheriff's Department, and I'm vice chair of that particular committee. And although I knew about the program, I had, had not myself participated in it, and I was very pleased and surprised that Under Sheriff Jeffrey Cook was able to give enough detail about the program and some feedback about the program from the uh, individuals who had participated in it that even uh, was surprising to me. And the 40 or 50 members of the Delta Side Business Association present greatly appreciated this presentation and their interest was sparked by uh, Jeff Cook's presentation to the point that several of them uh, expressed an interest in becoming involved in these 10, 11, 12 week academies uh, so that they too could enjoy and participate in this learning experience uh, off offered by the sheriff and his deputies uh, in the uh, civilian or community police academy. And that academy, it's presently running its second session of students and is scheduled to have a third uh, group or cadre of students available uh, starting in September of 2016. An excellent opportunity for hands-on participation. And the presentation by Under Sheriff Cook was approximately 30 minutes long. And as is my custom, I like to take pictures and occasionally videos of presentations, places I go during the course of the day and share it with my Facebook friends and others so that they can see what I am doing and share information. 
and I started doing that with my uh, cell phone camera and I found the presentation to be so interesting that I recorded extensive portions of that presentation which I'm going to be sharing with you in this video which I'm editing and putting forth uh, on Facebook and possibly YouTube uh, so that others in our community can see and learn more about this program and possibly be interested uh, to participate in it uh, with the sheriff and his staff. And I think, I think you'll enjoy it. I think you will learn a lot because uh, Jeff Cook goes into some great detail and using uh, some of the videos that are there, he actually shows that the civilians who participate in this 12-week program are able to uh, go through training uh, and hands-on operations, not only touring the jail and doing ride-alongs with some of our deputies, but actually doing things like going to the training grounds, participating in uh, some of the uh, uh, gun uh, marksmanship training uh, on an abbreviated basis, to, uh, and also the MILO program, which is the law enforcement training program uh, that we put our officers through uh, frequently for uh, training and certification purposes. And it's actually just a wonderful opportunity for uh, a limited group of people to participate. And I wanted to share the overview with you, which uh, Jeff Cook shared with the group at Delta Side Business Association and me uh, for the first time. And I think you'll like it. And I've also edited into this clip a couple of short pieces of some of the uh, graduates or participants of this Community Police Academy. Uh, who give their views and feedback about the experiences they had uh, prior to graduating from the first academy. And I think that will give you a great idea about the fact that this could be a valuable free opportunity for you or someone in the community uh, that would be interested to learn a lot about law enforcement and some of the challenges that uh, our sheriff and his deputies and law enforcement officers generally go through uh, on a day-by-day -day basis as they perform their their duties. And in this video, uh, Jeff will go through and highlight some of the areas of training. And that's particularly important, I think, because some of those areas of training relate to some uh, policy issues which are being discussed in a community now. Uh, the training which these community civilians go through includes uh, training in de-escalation of uh, intense situations where police and uh, 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 the community members interact. It goes through traffic stops, you know, the philosophy of traffic stops, the procedures, why they're done, how they're done. Uh, it, it goes through uh, a number of things, including some of the uh, instances that we've had in uh, uh, our jail and uh, I, I, like I said, uh, the civilians actually go through a portion of the uh, uh, incident uh, training where they get to uh, be involved in scenarios uh, electronically, digitally, digitally uh, uh, produced that place them in the same types of situations that our deputies are placed in where they have to make split-second decisions about how to handle situations especially in confrontation situations or, or, or traffic stop situations. You never know as a police officer when you walk up to a car uh, what will be looking back at you over that uh, car window sill. And so uh, I, I wanted to share this and I want you to understand and share it with your friends. If you have questions or if you want to get involved in the uh, uh, follow-up or next uh, police academy, civilian police academy, uh, contact Sheriff Reich or his staff uh, and the URL uh, for that will be available at the end of this video and uh, uh, you can apply for participation in the upcoming session uh, this fall and, and I think it would be a valuable use of your time. Uh, the, hour, the sessions are about two hours long each and like I said there are at least 10 and possibly up to 12 weeks of these sessions. So uh, something to think about and you can get more information from the Sheriff's Department if your interest is of that level. So I hope that you enjoy what uh, uh, Under Sheriff Cook has to share with you. If you have questions, again, you can address those to the Sheriff's Department, and I'm sure that uh, they'd be happy to 
try to answer those questions for you. Uh, and the presentation, I have to apologize for it. I had not come to the Delta Side meeting expecting to be able to do uh, a professional capture of the uh, presentation. Uh, in fact, I had not really been aware when I showed up that Jeff Cook was going to be there making this particular presentation. Uh, so uh, I, I took the, uh, uh, the video on my cell phone camera, so it may not be the best. Uh, and I have had to chop it up into pieces, so uh, I apologize for the technical aspects where it may seem to go abruptly from one segment to the other. And obviously the video you're about to see is 22 minutes long when it's pieced together. And Jeff's presentation, as he gave it, was closer to, uh, I think, 30 or 35 minutes. So enjoy, and uh, thank you for taking the time and having the interest to want to know more about the uh, Police Academy for Civilians, which uh, Sheriff Tom Reich uh, uh, makes available. And uh, points made in here, I think, are important. Uh, we regard law enforcement out here in Eaton County and Delta Township as something that really is a very basic government function and isn't something that we allow to be placed on a partisan level to the extent that it would uh, disrupt or interfere with our ability to be as safe as we can and to be as professional as we can in interacting with uh, our residents and our visitors. Uh, and so you know, Sheriff Reich, uh, uh, and also uh, Prosecutor Lloyd, uh, Doug Lloyd, uh, they work together successfully as a team. Uh, they both are experienced long-term law enforcement professionals and uh, and they keep us safe out here and, and we appreciate what they're doing. And I think that the individuals who attend this Civilian Police Academy leave it with a better understanding of the importance of law enforcement, the importance of keeping us safe and, in fact, the challenges that our sheriffs, the deputies, and the prosecutors uh, face on a daily basis. So enjoy. And you'll see the academy all lined up here with their eye glasses on and their hearing protection. And so we took a little field trip out there, and they really enjoyed that. That was uh, a nice experience for them. And in week two, we brought in, we brought in um, several different instructors and we talked about patrol operations and tactics. And we also um, had a demonstration or equipment demonstration and a, and a to, a to a domestic call, to a retail fraud call, to a, um, a breaking and entering. Um, different things that occur on patrol, different situations we deal with. Obviously, a couple hours just, just scratches the surface, but we get a lot of a lot of questions on that. Um, here's some of the some of the presenters. Uh, put that up there so it looks a little bit better. Yeah, uh, the presenters that, that were engaged in that reconstruction. If you don't know, is um, is where we have a, a very serious accident involving serious injuries that could lead, lead to a fatality. We have a highly trained accident investigation team that comes out to the scene. I know Prosecutor Lloyd is, is very glad that we have that resource because we have some individuals who actually are qualified as expert witnesses, in particular uh, Detective Rick Buxton. I know that Prosecutor Lloyd likes to use him on, on the information and the evidence that they need to move forward. And we have a drunk driver that kills someone. It's so critically important that that, that is covered and that, that we cover all the bases and and uh, do those investigations. This is Deputy Keyes talking about traffic stops and traffic enforcement. Um, I can tell you the, the engagement by the, the citizens in this academy was just awesome. You know, you never saw anybody being distracted with their cell phones or anything else that was going on. They were just riveted. And the number of questions that they asked um, very open, interactive in, in every one of the lectures. Um, there you can see, uh, that's Detective Buxton on the left there. He's, uh, he's just an outstanding detective. And he talked about uh, the accident investigations and the reconstructions. And um, that, that was a, a very interesting presentation. We had a corrections overview and a jail tour. 
I don't have a lot of pictures for this. So we don't typically show a lot of pictures of the inside of our jail. I'm sure you can understand why, for safety and security reasons. But um, they were fascinated. You know, so many people think about a law enforcement, they don't realize that the sheriff's office, a critical part of our department, is the jail. It's, it's an incredibly complex operation. We're responsible for the care and custody of up to 374 inmates, which is the capacity of our jail. We've been averaging about 220 or down some. A lot of that has to do with um, the cooperation with our court system for alternative sentencing and the prosecutor's office through their diversion program has kept our numbers um, reasonable and manageable and we're grateful for that. And and all that. Our jail doesn't have many of those. Uh, our jail has a lot of high security glass and steel and it's, that's, it's a modern jail. It's a very clean jail. Um, and they went on a tour of the jail, were able to see it. That's the railing in the upper level of one of our housing units of medium security. And you can see, you can see the, the doors to the cell, uh, to the cells up here. Um, you can see how they're glass and, and there's windows and steel doors. And that's, that's how they're operated. A lot of the students were absolutely amazed. Right, we brought them to Atlantic Community College, College's West Campus where we train our deputies. And it's called Milo and it's a, it's a simulation machine, an exercise to where they're using um, plastic or replica type weapons that we carry. Um, they're armed with that, they're armed with pepper spray, they're armed with a, with a baton, and they're armed with making verbal commands because they never know in a scenario what they're going to encounter. And it's a, video, it's a video presentation where they are immersed and they get to make the decisions. They get to, to, to give the verbal commands and the person that's operating the simulator can change the outcome. So if somebody's giving proper verbal commands and doing everything right, they'll get compliance and the person will submit to the arrest, etc. If um, at different times you'll have the situation go the other way and the person may attack, attack the, the deputy and they have to use, make appropriate decisions. And, uh, they were pretty fascinated by that. Um, prior to going into the range, we split them up into two groups, section, and they were able to um, understand or explain the various degrees of force, how we try to de-escalate every situation that we come on. De-escalation is a topic that you hear all the time now, but it's not new. It starts at day one in the police academy. Every call that we go on from a, um, a retail fraud in the business where you got a distraught person that's just been apprehended by, by customer security, or I'm sorry, by um, store security. When we get there, oftentimes, the very first thing our deputies need to do is calm them down and de-escalate it and stop the resistance. And so we talk about all those things and we go through the different levels of force that are applied when the person that we're dealing with causes that to happen. And that's something that's very important to remember is, is that typically in, in, well, in every use of force, there's a cause factor and it's caused by the choices the person that we're dealing with is making. Um, if, if they're, if they're submit, submissive to the, to the detention or the arrest or the incident, then that's the level that's used. However, when they choose to become um, resistant or violent, that's when things start to, start to move up and escalate. We try to head that off. We try to de-escalate it before it happens. Unfortunately, sometimes we have some very, very bad people that, that, that choose to um, escalate it very severely. So that's the lecture that uh, uh, Deputy Bricker was giving about um, our use of force. And um, then they, they went to the student here engaging in what's going on. He's given verbal commands and the person is, is this was a break-in type call, and the person is obviously submitted and went down to the ground as ordered, and um, that was the end result of that scenario. Um, this time they have weapons drawn because they have a mentally disturbed person with a large knife in his hand attacking an officer. They're trying to get the person to stop. Um, Sergeant Relier, a retired Clancy Police Department Sergeant Relier works at LCC, and this is a picture of him um, debriefing with, with each of the students. And um, here's another situation where they're giving verbal commands. You can see the person on the left trying to communicate and talk uh, to, the, to the individual that they're encountering. And same situation here. Um, this, this person gave the proper commands. This, this person obviously submitted to what's going on. I'll show you a, a brief um, 
video clip that will um, give you an idea of what they might encounter. Oops. Everybody's complying, everybody's doing well in that, in that situation. We'll go to the next one. You can see where the scenario can change by the instructor. In this situation, you'll see a, a different result. Yeah. See the guy over there? Now she's going to take a gun. Who, who, who do you think won that encounter? You see her get the shot off first? Play it again. Yeah. It happens real quick. So those are the types of things that they did and it was a real eye opener for them. Things are involved in. Anytime there's, anytime there's a weather emergency or a disaster, um, emergency services becomes involved. Everything from that to, you recall the, the train derailment in Potterville many years ago that um, our emergency services division, the sheriff's office is responsible for that. The sheriff is actually the emergency services director. We have a sergeant that fills that role under his direction. Sergeant Brown, he does a great job. Uh, we showed him our emergency <laughs> operations center in, in the lower level of the sheriff's office and they got to see all the equipment and how it's activated and what happens when a emergency occurs in the county. Uh, we also gave them a tour of our central dispatch. Central dispatch is our, that's our lifeline. They are so important um, in everything we do every day and they got a full tour of that. We're able to be called being dispatched <coughs> and um, it went really well. Presentation, I think some people are just a little disappointed to, to hear that uh, we don't solve crimes as quickly as they do on the hour long shows that we see on television and then all of the CSI stuff. That's, that's basically the first thing we start with when we talked about detective bureau crime scene processing is how many people here watch CSI and everybody's raising their hand and then the next thing that we say is it's nothing like that. Because in, in reality, yeah, some of the things that you can do involve that, but they take so much more time. Prosecutor Lloyd can attest to the delays it takes to get things back from the crime lab and the DNA analysis, we might be six months to a year sometimes. Uh, depending on where it's at and its order, but um, they went through and we actually gave them some hands-on um, exercises on processing a crime scene. They in particular liked, that's, that's uh, our captain in charge of field services uh, and detective bureau captain Tim Jungle, and um, they particularly liked um, doing footwear impression castings and they were able to use uh, the equipment that we use to do that and, and get some castings of, of footwear impressions, which you know, can be important to place a, a suspect at a scene of a crime, so they enjoyed that. We did some latent print exercises as well where they were allowed to lift latent prints off some objects and they were pretty fascinated by that. The ages range from, we had a, a person that was um, just starting college, a senior high school, just starting college, and then we had the gentleman on the far left there was probably 70 or so. So we had a wide range of people from all over the county. We had many residents from, from Delta as well. Um, it was a nice cross-section of students. In week eight, uh, we talked about fraud. That's probably near and dear to many of the business people's hearts here. And we talked about the, the rampant problem with fraud and um, uh, Detective Aaron Roberts came in and gave him a real good Real good overview of the things he deals with every day, um, the things that happen at businesses and also with um, residents that are victims. And we also brought in detective fellows to talk about computer forensics. And he did a presentation about how he can go into computers and basically find all the things that people think that they've deleted and that they've hidden. And he's able to go in and do a forensic examination and find it. We also talked about some of the techniques that, that he used um, in the Green Homicide case, um, some of the computer forensics that were involved in that, and the GPS um, um, information, how critical that was to the prosecution of that case. There's Detective Aaron Roberts lecturing, and um, here's Detective Fellows here lecturing on computer forensics. Some of that was a little over their head, I'll tell you. Most of it's over my head, too. It gets pretty involved, but they still appreciated hearing about it.
Week nine, we brought in the, um, we have a methamphetamine enforcement team that we send throughout the county and they are highly effective, not only in um, getting intelligence information and locating and arresting uh, methamphetamine cooks or productions, uh, taking down labs, but also they're involved in cleaning up uh, methamphetamine. If you don't know what that drug is, uh, I'll just briefly tell you it's a drug that people make at home. The, the ingredients that are used to make it are highly toxic, very hazardous if you come in contact with it. So part of the, of the, of the responsibilities of the meth team is um, this is Sergeant Block and, and Detective Sergeant Ivy um, giving a lecture on the meth team. And one of the things that, uh, one of the components of the meth team is actually not only finding and arresting the violators and dismantling the lab and collecting the evidence for, for prosecution, but also to clean up this hazardous waste, whether it's at a business parking lot or whether it's at a farm field so that we don't have a citizen be exposed to these toxic substances. Many of you in the businesses may know, or some of you here may know, that we get called to different businesses because people are buying the components of methamphetamine. They're buying um, lithium batteries. They're buying, um, um, we used to be Drano. There's several different components that they buy that they use to mix it. And so we'll get called on that. Uh, this is uh, Detective Lieutenant Brian Bailey with Tri-County Metro Narcotics. Uh, he came out and did a presentation that night as well. They were fascinated with uh, the um, complexity of narcotics investigations. I worked at Metro for about four years, and um, he did an excellent job explaining how we, from start to finish, from information that's developed to controlled buys, to undercover buys, to working that organization up to not only go to the street level dealer, but to go all the way up to the distributor. Sometimes we would travel to other states as I did to get connections in other states and work with the federal government on multi-state operations. And I gotta tell you, you can see him hover around here at the end. He could hardly get out of the door. They just question after question up to the point where he had his coat on and was ready to go and they were still still asking questions. So it was that was a great night. We came to Delta Township for that. We were at the fire station. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we use their facility to, to do our lecture, and they have a, a great smart board there that we were able to use. And we were able to show them how what we could call to a barricaded gunman or armed robbery or hostage situation, how the planning that goes in before deploying the team whenever possible. Um, and um, we then went over to our training house, and they were able to observe our team make an entry, a dynamic entry into the house. Um, and take a suspect into custody. We had a couple of actors that were suspects, and so they were able to see a high-risk environment where our team was deployed um, to resolve that. As part of that, hostage negotiations, when we say hostage, yes, they're hostage negotiators, but they're negotiators, period. We call them out on many difficult situations. We just had one here in Delta Township this morning where we called them out with an emotionally disturbed person, and we were able to get that person to come out, um, and we were able to take that person into custody. And this time, the person wasn't on the phone while I was in route up here. I was aware of what was going on. I could hear that they were actually using a, a speaker system to communicate with that person, with one of our trained negotiators, to get that person to willingly come outside. We want to avoid making a dynamic entry, an entry into a residence whenever we can. And that was stressed to the citizens that whenever possible, we try to diffuse and de-escalate the situation and get willing compliance. Because if we have to make entry, not only are we at risk, but, but certainly the person inside is at risk of, of, of serious injury and any other um, bystander. So it was, a, it was a nice presentation, and they really enjoyed that. Very highly trained people that will respond and keep you safe. Our canine team did a demonstration showing, them, showing the class how, how the canine assists in taking people into custody and also in tracking missing subjects and searching for narcotics. We also have a canine in our jail that we've added that uh, we thought was important for inmates to, or as people were trying to smuggle drugs into the jail, to know that we have a dog that sits there every day in the jail. Um, we did, uh, we did um, the graduation on, on week 11 and we actually showed our honor guard coming in. Our honor guard came in and we explained how we honor um, people who die in the line of duty and also people who have served for many years and then subsequently die. In fact, our honor guard is involved 
in the funeral today of uh, former Sheriff Art Kelsey, who passed away. And he was Sheriff of Eaton County for 16 years. So our, our honor guard will be present as Paul Bears today and showing him the proper dignity and respect for his 16 years of service to Eaton County. Volunteer and police services. We did a demonstration. Hopefully, and in fact, we actually have had a couple of people in the Citizens Academy now want to get involved in the department on a volunteer basis. We have victim advocates who are critical. Um, Delta Township's own Mary Clark is, the, is one of the leads in our victim advocates, and we don't know what we do without them. They come out to scenes when we have, typically we have a death that's involved, and they deal with the victim's families and advocate for them and do just an amazing job and allow us to focus on what we need to do at a crime scene or a fatal accident scene or some other tragic incident that, result, that re resulted in a death or extremely serious injury. So we did a presentation on that and then we had a graduation and um, they were all presented by Sheriff Reich with certificates of, of completion and um, uh, you can see that they're pretty happy to receive that and it was a very, very nice ceremony. Here's the, the, the first Citizens Academy. They're not all present. Not everybody could make every week, and there were a few people that missed graduation. But you can see the wide, wide range of age and uh, the demographics of that group. I think you'd agree that it's, it's a pretty nice group. It's, it's very well um, distributed. So continuing our community engagement and education. Yeah, just a couple of uh, questions, Jeff. Uh, morale of cadre, you know, there's been a lot of things going on with the sheriff's department and the public media and so forth. How are the deputies reacting to that? Uh, and also the aspect of your cooperation with the prosecutor's office. Uh, you know, it's a bipartisan effort. Can you just tell the people here about the professionalism of what's going on and, and, and how you focus on your mission rather than the environment? Well, we strive for professionalism and excellence with all our deputies. I, I can tell you that you have some outstanding, highly trained deputies in our office. And when, as Howard mentions, when there is a, a small group of individuals who are spreading some, or attempting to spread some discord or to damage the um, uh, reputation of, of the deputies, our deputies are look beyond that. They're, they're, they know that they are very professional, very well trained. Their morale is high. They, they know that there are the silent majority out there supports them and that um, all across the country you're hearing a lot of things about law enforcement and the people that are, are not pleased with law enforcement. But our deputies um, will, would tell you that they go out every day to serve you and, and they do it in the same manner as if there was no national public discord about that. As far as working with the prosecutor's office, it's, it's, it's absolute teamwork. Um, it's, it's critical that our department, being a former detective and detective lieutenant, I really understand that we need to have case ready um, cases for the prosecutor. The less time we have to go back and do additional investigation, the better. But the process starts with us, the complaints come into us, we go out and do the investigations, we gather the facts, we gather the evidence, hopefully get confessions, we get the information and the data for the prosecutor's office, we then take over and decide to issue complaint warrants or not. And if a warrant's issued, obviously then they're gonna proceed into trial. Our involvement doesn't end there though. We work as a team with uh, Prosecutor Lloyd's assistant prosecutors in case preparation, any additional investigative follow-up that needs to be done, and in, 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 certainly in the trial as an active participant at the prosecutor's table. So it's a symbiotic uh, effort, uh, teamwork effort, Howard, and it's, it's, it's very critical. And we think uh, we have a great relationship with our prosecutor's office, and our deputies uh, work very well with the assistant prosecuting attorneys. Um, it's our goal to the end result is to work for the victims. Our end result is to get justice for victims of crimes and to pr present a great case for the prosecutor to assist him in being successful in prosecuting suspects that are involved so that uh, justice is served.
Hi, my name is Mike DeFores, uh, resident of Delta Township, and I uh, just completed the first Citizen Police Academy for Eaton County Sheriff Department. And uh, I can tell you without hesitation that uh, the dollars spent and the time spent uh, presenting various topics uh, to us as citizens was very well uh, uh, utilized and uh, particularly impressed with the professionalism of, of the presenters, the deputies, the command staff. Uh, Eaton County is, is very proud of what they have here and as a citizen I know my money is being well spent. So I uh, can't say enough about this class. Thank you. My name is Joel Sackridge, and I was in the first class of the Eaton County Sheriff's Department Citizen Police Academy. And uh, when I first came into this, I didn't know what to expect. I've gone through two police academies in the past, and uh, they were wonderful. And Eaton County, I was kind of wondering what was going to happen here. And by golly, they did not disappoint me. It was far and above uh, what I expected. I was very enthralled by what was going on. I learn a lot. It's a great thing to do. And I would encourage everyone to take this class. This class is just going to get better because they will hone it, sharpen it up, and it will be better in the future. So uh, sign up, take this class. It's wonderful.